while everyone else was trying to stay dry during California's spell of atmospheric rivers this winter, a group of meteorologists were trying to answer this question. How bad would the next one be? We're going north about 1,500 miles almost into uh, about halfway from here to Alaska. The crew on board the Gulf Stream jet was tasked with collecting data from inside the atmospheric river that had formed over the Pacific Ocean. By measuring its intense winds and water vapor, they were able to piece together a detailed picture of the storm. So we found scientifically that the most important region of the atmosphere to sample to get the west coast precipitation and AR landfall right is actually the AR and its formative you know, conditions offshore, you know, a, a day to five days ahead. At more than 42,000 feet, the sky looks blue and the clouds below look nothing like the satellite images that made the rounds earlier this month. That's because an atmospheric river is largely indistinguishable to the untrained eye and is usually shrouded in clouds below an altitude of about 10,000 feet. They sort of hide in plain sight. And we've just recently, in the last 10, 15 years, figured out really how to look for them, how to measure them best, and how to characterize them. The crew uses drop zones, which are tube-shaped devices that are equipped with parachutes and packed with instruments that measure location, wind speed and direction, temperature, and humidity. Each one of the more than 30 drop zones released during AR recon missions is dropped at a precise point on the map. As they float down, the drop zones transmit a stream of data back to the plane by radio before hitting the water and sinking to the bottom of the ocean. Uh, red is temperature, blue is dew point, and then we have the wind speeds on the right hand side and it's as it falls. We're seeing these lines are far apart, so we're seeing more dry air. Um, as we approach it, we're gonna start seeing those lines come closer together. Um, and the entire sounding, which is what this pod is that we're looking at, the entire sounding is essentially going to look, um, the lines are going to come together and it's going to look kind of like a little skinny thing that looks like this. <laughs> People along the West Coast have long known that a certain special type of big storm often brings much of the rain and snow. But until just a couple of decades ago, not that many had heard these storms be described as an atmospheric river. So an atmospheric river is what it sounds like. It's a river in the sky, but it's a river of water vapor. And it turns out if you look at the Northern Hemisphere, there might be three or four of them at any one time. They're a few hundred miles wide, a couple thousand miles long, and they transport massive amounts of water vapor, more than multiple times the Amazon River's discharge into the Atlantic Ocean. Atmospheric rivers can form up in less than a day and often over the ocean. This one is predicted to hit California in the next couple days. The Atmospheric River Scale, which was developed by Marty Ralph and other researchers ranks atmospheric rivers from one to five and creates the categories weak, moderate, strong, extreme, and exceptional. Southern California generally doesn't get AR5 and AR4 storms, but AR3s are still strong storms. A central idea behind the Atmospheric River Reconnaissance Program is that having more data and more area covered can significantly improve forecasts and help dam operators better manage water through extreme storms. We've been in the middle of a 23-year drought, so we haven't had a lot of examples of time where we needed to make flood control releases, but this happens to be one of those times. Prado Dam, which is operated by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, is a part of a pilot project that uses the data meteorologists collect from inside the atmospheric rivers to manage dams more flexibly. When the water in the reservoir is about 505 feet and there are no more atmospheric river storms in the forecast, the core will release the water at a higher rate. This series of atmospheric rivers wasn't exactly a large flood event as a singular event, but over time it builds up and obviously uh, it adds to the inflow to the reservoir. And so we've got a pool now. Uh, the pool is a little bit higher than we normally hold for water conservation purposes. Once the water is released, it flows downstream and is then captured by the Orange County Water District recharge basins. So we'll take it as much as we can and recharge all of it down into our aquifers in Orange County so we don't have any flow out to the ocean. The storm water, as we call it, that provides a local source of water. If we can capture more of that, it reduces our reliance on imported supplies from the Colorado River. The forecasting of those storms is getting better but there still is some uncertainty and predicting rainfall rates. You know, it's an evolving science, but um, 
There's been significant progress made in predicting the large events, which are the atmospheric river events. Flying high above the atmospheric rivers, this jet has become a key part of an expanding national effort to help the West Coast prepare for the next big storms.